How's it going guys? Easy question for renal slash physiology for step one and two, a nearly identical question shows up on one of the new 2CK and BME forms, so very similar answer choices. Even if you think you already know the answer, I'm going to tell you some high yield points you might not be aware of for some of these answer choices. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L and my N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. Seven-year-old boy has got a four-day history of diarrhea and vomiting. He's not voided during the past 24 hours. Examination shows dry mucous membranes and poor skin turgor. Question just wants to know what's most likely to be seen in this patient. Let's walk through the answer choices. Choice A, two plus blood on dipstick. With zero to one RBCs per high powered field on light microscopy, wrong answer, okay? Now, this sounds very verbose and specific, which you need to know, albeit wrong, is exceedingly high yield for rhabdomyolysis, especially on 2CK forms, okay? This is what we call a false positive blood on urine dipstick, all right? So that's because the dipstick can't differentiate between the hemoglobin in red blood cells and just myoglobinuria in the setting of rhabdo. So the dipstick will say there's blood, but then when you do a light microscopy, there actually isn't blood, okay? This is rhabdomyolysis. I have to reiterate, super fucking high yield for rhabdomyolysis on 2CK in particular. And what can make this even more difficult is that three to four RBCs per high powered field I've seen as negative, all right? So I wrote zero to one here. There's a question where they have where they have three to four RBCs as negative. If they want positive, they're gonna give you at least 20, 20, 50, okay? Just a higher number. There's no specific cutoff. The point is, choice A, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, fractional excretion of sodium is 0.5% is the correct answer. This is pre-renal azotemia, okay? Dehydration over the course of days, and you have decreased renal blood flow. The kidney's going to attempt to compensate for the reduced blood flow by trying to reabsorb more fluid. It accomplishes this by reabsorbing more sodium and urea in the PCT. Water follows sodium and urea. We get our reabsorption. So what that does is we're pulling sodium out of the urine. So we're going to have less fractional excretion of sodium, under 1%. And because we're pulling urea out of the urine, we're going to have a high blood urea nitrogen, okay? BUN to creatinine ratio greater than 20, all right? So that's high yield for pre-renal azotemia. So just general dehydration of the course of days, diuretic use, congestive heart failure, okay? These NSAID use, uh, important uh, etiologies for pre-renal azotemia. I've made plenty of clips on this stuff if you check the, the renal playlist. Choice C, granular cast, wrong answer. Of course, this classically... Uh, refers to acute tubular necrosis, uh, which can occur in the setting of reduced blood flow. Now, I said I preface this clip by saying there's some high yield points you need to know. If they, for example, give you acute loss of blood flow, acute, okay, blood loss during surgery, uh, patient's blood pressure dropped to 80 on 40 for 30 seconds and was resuscitated. Patient had ventricular fibrillation. Uh, there was 30 seconds of decreased renal perfusion. That will cause acute tubular ne necrosis, not pre-renal. Holy shit, okay? Super fucking high yield. It's all over the NBME exams for step one and two. Students erroneously think that's pre-renal. They say it's reduced renal blood flow. I agree with you. But the PCT, very sensitive to ischemic changes because of the high concentration of ATPase transporters, okay? So another high yield point you need to know is that uh, not just muddy brown or dirty brown granular casts for acute tubular necrosis, but also, quote unquote, just general granular casts as they're written here can just be seen in EG dehydration, okay? And you say, well, this patient's dehydrated. I know, okay? But I'm just letting you know, granular casts can be seen in dehydration. I've also seen these for pyelonephritis on the 2CK form, okay? They give you fever, costovertebral angle tenderness. They say urine is positive for granular casts. And the answer is pylo. Acute tubular necrosis is the wrong fucking answer. Okay. Let's just move forward here. So choice D, urine osmolality of 280 mil osmol per kilogram. Wrong answer. The normal urine osmolality is 500 to 850. And if we had pre-renal, because we're pulling all that water out of the urine in the PCT, we're going to increase urine osmolality. Okay. So we expect it to be at least 500 to 550. All right. The point is, if we want to argue about exact numbers, this is clearly dilute, and we're not going to have dilute urine in prerenal azotemia. So, uh, and by the way, the serum osmolality should be about 280, 282, up to about 295 milliosmol, so different number ranges. 
Don't worry though, you don't have to obsess, I'm just articulating it. Choice E, you're in specific gravity, gravity of 1.012, wrong answer. So the range is gonna go from 1.000, which is the most dilute, up to 1.030, which is most concentrated. So if we're at the lower range, diabetes insipidus, psychogenic polydipsia, if we're at the upper range, severe dehydration, SIADH, okay? And this is smack dab in the middle. We're talking most scenarios, most questions. There's always gonna be exceptions. I've made prior clips here on the YouTube for the Audio QBank discussing some of the exceptions. But the point is this, pre-renal azotemia, fractional excretion of sodium under 1%, BU and a creatinine ratio greater than 20. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.